Sir, 
sir ase participant 34 hoise student entry koribo ase baru ami start koi diu sir start koi diu timely ami ahibo okay thank you a very good morning to all, one and all present in this guest lecture session organized by the department of economics women's college tinsukia respected principal sir respected hod of economics department proposed um, dr roy sir respected resource person dr surajit chaikia sir my fellow colleagues and my dear students and uh, today we are assembled here to for a lecture session by dr surajit chaikia as all of we know agriculture is the backbone of our country but the in changing climate um, in climates in, due to climate change the indian agriculture has been facing lots of challenges so to counter this adverse impact we the department of economics feel it that it is necessary to aware our students regarding the different issues of indian agriculture so considering this the department of uh, economics organized this lecture session on experimenting indian agriculture in 21st century now i would like to request our respected principal dr rajiv bordoloi sir to say few words and inaugurate this lecture session sir welcome sir yeah. mm dhanyawad thank you sir uh, respected faculty members including hod of economics department our revered invited speaker for today's uh, guest lecture dr surajit Soikia from Gurgaon College, my dear students, a very good morning to all of you and welcome to this program. So I am asked to inaugurate this guest lecture. Uh, so complying to their request, economics departments, let me say that this program has been inaugurated. Economics is one of the premier departments in this institution. All the faculty members are very sincere and hardworking. Students are also very energetic, always enthusiastic to learn new things. And academically also they are very good. I congratulate Dr. Surovi for inviting me to inaugurate this program. And I'm sure Dr. Surajit Saikia's yeah. class will immensely benefit our students. They will be enriched. And it is definitely going to be a new test because they always get to listen to their own professors. So a faculty member from a different college, when they come and talk to our students, definitely it will be very enriching in a new test, in a different taste. So these few lines, I would wind up by declaring the program inaugurated. But before that, I have a very humble request to economics department and for that matter for all the departments. Guest lecture should be, it's, it's a purely academic program. It should be exclusively between the invited speaker and the students. It should not be like a meeting. So my request is that if your lecture program is a one hour, you please give 99.9% .9 space to the invited speaker and the students. Only the concerned teacher who teaches that particular course should be there as a moderator or she or he to take two to three minutes to begin the program. As a principal, I believe my role should be here in guest lectures at least. My role should be just to give the invitation letter and humbly to present the appreciation letter or appreciation certificate to the concerned honorable faculty. So I would request you uh, for few sir to please remember this thing and good luck to the program, my dear students. Good luck to all of you. Professor Soikia, welcome to our college. You are actually part of our family member. So welcome back again. With these few lines, I wind up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your kind words. And now I would like to introduce today's respected resource person, Dr. Shurajit Soikya, sir. Dr. Shurajit Soikya, sir, he is the assistant professor in the Department of Economics, Gorgang College. He did his PhD in agricultural diversification in Assam, a study of the Brahmaputra Valley from Dibukar University in the year 2015. He has published many high index research papers in different national and international scopus and UGC care listed journal. Presently, he is conducting a major research project entitled Sustainable Agricultural Practices Among the Tribes of Northeast India, sponsored by ICSSR. 
and he has immense knowledge in the field of agricultural research. As we know, knowledge is no values unless you put it into practice. Um, today's resource person, Dr. Shurajit Soikya, is a man of practicing agriculture in the real field with high uh, knowledge of high and scientific knowledge of agricultural production and productivity. I sincerely believe that our students and all the participants will be benefited much by the illuminating and energetic presentation by Dr. Shurajit Soikia. Uh, I would like to request all our students and participants to freely interact with him and to clear your queries. Okay, so Dr. Shurajit Soikia, sir, the Department of Economics, Women's College in Sikia has the privilege uh, to welcome you in the lecture session and request you to begin the session. Welcome, sir. Welcome, Thank sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So very good morning to everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Surabhi, Dr. Vaidu, for your praising words for me. But right now I am not at that level, but I'm trying to uh, do my best. So respected principal, Dr. Rajiv Bordulu, sir, head, Department of Economics, Dr. Opposite, Dr. Roy, sir, faculty members of Department of Economics, and my student friends. So it is a great privilege and honor for me to be a part of this program that is organized by one of the leading educational institutions of Assam. So thank you for the organizers, thank you organizers for inviting me to share some of my knowledge about agriculture economics. So I have about 56 slides in my PPT. So without delay, if the organizers permit them, I'm trying to share my PPTs. Thank you. Sure, sure. May I share? Okay. Okay, sure. You can share. Is it uh, visible? Yes, it is visible. Okay. It's coming. So. Good morning to everyone, uh, dear students. I am going to share uh, some of my knowledge about agricultural economics. So today I have been given the responsibilities uh, to justify this topic that is experimenting Indian agriculture in 21st century issues, challenges, and potentialities. So the contents of the class, so first, I will share and I will discuss about macroeconomic scenario of Indian agriculture. Secondly, I'm going to share some of the issues and challenges of Indian agriculture. And I'm also trying to compare the issues and challenges with some of the leading agricultural countries of the world. Next. Issues from grounds, it is very necessary as the presentation is completely on secondary information. But from my experience, I will share some of the issues uh, that is observed in the ground level. So policy recommendations on the basis of discussions and potentialities of Indian agriculture. And after that, I will conclude. So hope. Uh, there will be a very active uh, interaction with the students. If you have any doubts and queries, uh, you can definitely share. I will try to make you clear. So first, macroeconomic scenario of Indian agriculture. First, I would like to discuss some of the facts of Indian agriculture. So we know that Indian agriculture sector is the vital sector of Indian economy. It generates around 43% of 
employment opportunities or 43% of Indian workforce are directly engaged in this sector. So that is 58 crores approximately. So it contributes around 16% recently in 2021, it has increased to 18%, that is around 34 lakhs, 44,000 crores to its GDP. So our one of the agenda of development of the government of India is to secure food. So agriculture helps to secure food security in the country. In addition to this, agriculture contributes around 12% to its total export. So it has a tremendous role in the economy. However, in the recent years, we have observed some of the issues of Indian agriculture, some of the challenges of Indian agriculture, and that is why it is very necessary to experiment the sector from different angles to develop some policy, policy measures in the coming years to apply in the ground level. So my complete presentation will be on the issues and challenges of uh, Indian agriculture. So first, the growth rate of Indian agriculture. As you have seen that the growth part of Indian agriculture or the growth trend line of Indian agriculture is not consistent over the years. I have taken from 1954-55 to 2019-20. During this period, you will observe that the curve is fluctuating. It is inconsistent in nature. So why the curve is inconsistent? Why the growth rate is inconsistent? The so first thing is that the agriculture sector does not or it fails to generate incomes, consistent incomes over the years. In some years, it generates good income. In some years, it completely fails. So there is a fluctuating curve over the years we are experiencing. When the curve is fluctuating, when the growth rate is fluctuating, then there will be risks in the enterprise. When there is more risk, it is well known to you as a student of uh, economics, then the entrepreneurs, the farmers avoid to include within that system as the enterprise is more risky. In recent times, what we have observed that rural urban migration, shifting occupation from agriculture to other enterprises like this. And this is due to the fact that the Indian agriculture is not organized in true sense. If you look into the agriculture sector of some of the leading agriculturally forward countries of the world, like USA, like New Zealand, like Australia, like China, they have a very consistent growth rate. Yes, there is fluctuations, but the fluctuations is somehow different from the fluctuation in India. They are generating very good incomes from agriculture. Their agricultural structure or the sector is very much organized. Another thing is that the government of India fails to develop some good policy measures. Yes, we have thousands of schemes related to agriculture development, but when the government introduced such type of schemes or programs in agriculture, I think they, the research activities before the implication of the policy, before developing the objectives of the policy is limited in case of India. That is why, yes, there was green revolution in India, after Green Revolution, India became one of the food surplus country. But the impact of Green Revolution was not realized or has not been realized by all the states of the country equally. That is, there is lack of inclusiveness. So inclusiveness is very essential for the development of any sectors of an economy. But in case of agriculture, it is not 
happening. So I will discuss about the fluctuating nature of growth of Indian agriculture in the later part of this presentation. <coughs> Next, contribution of agriculture to GDP and international comparison. From 1950 to till now, the contribution of agriculture to GDP has been uh, declining. The card shows that the contribution of agriculture sector to its GDP has been declining. Slight improvement uh, have observed in the recent years, but Indian, the contribution of agriculture sector has declined over the years. But in, it is also happening in case of the developed countries of the world too. Their contribution to agriculture sector has also been declining. And the declining trend of contribution of agriculture is not bad because the contribution of other two sectors, that is service and industrial sector, has improved in India. But the figures matter. In case of India, agriculture contributes around 18.32 to its GDP. In case of China, it is 7.65%. And in case of USA, it is 0.3%. But the contribution in terms of crores, in case of India, it is 39,43,380 crores. Whereas the contribution of China is only 7.65%. And it contributes, so far as value is concerned, in terms of Indian rupees, it will be 82,27,575 crores. Their value is much more than India. In case of USA, the value is less, but the percentage of people engaged in agriculture is only 0.90%. 0.93% contributes. 14,94,740 crores to its city. So from this angle, from these dimensions, the agriculture sector of India has not performed well as compared to the developed countries of the world. So there is lack of value addition in case of Indian agriculture. So when we are talking about the sector-wise contribution in case of India, then we have observed that the contribution of the service sector has been increasing over the years. The green line justifies this fact that the contribution of the service sector has been increasing, whereas the contribution of agriculture sector has been declining. The blue line indicates that. So there is a huge gap among these sectors so far as contribution to GDP is concerned. So I'm writing no macroeconomic balance. Yes, we are talking about inclusive growth, inclusive growth. In 11 five-year plan, in 12 five-year plan, the core objective was to achieve inclusive growth. But in case of India, but we have observed that there is no macroeconomic balance among these sectors. And the contribution of agriculture has been declining. It is declining because the products of the agriculture sector is not remunerative in nature. And you will get this, get the answer of this question in the later part of this presentation very clearly. Why the agriculture sector fails to generate some remunerative incomes over the years. So the demand of agricultural products, Indian agriculture sector fails to uh, increase demand of their products because we are selling our products in raw form. There is lack of vertical integration of the product or vertical diversification of the products. And that is why we are generating less income from agriculture. It completely fails to create demand. Now the consumption pattern of the population have been changing, but we are producing, but we are producing uh, wheat and rice mainly. When we will discuss about the cropping pattern, then you will find that 
Indian agriculture concentrates to produce only wheat and rice. They are not concentrating to produce some high value added agricultural commodities. Then I have already told about policy failures. All the government schemes works properly, work properly in the short run. We have a very long run, long run motive of objective of the agricultural policies. All the policies tries to fulfill the short run demands of the agriculture. Most of the agricultural schemes that I have found. So lack of value addition. So why the performance of service sector is good? Why the, why the service sector contributes more to the GDP? It contributes more than 60% to its GDP. So the performance of service sector is good because I have mentioned some of the points, some of the reasons. The first one is make their product needed. Second one is boost their brand awareness. Third one is integrated approach to create demand. When we are talking about integrated approach to create demand, it means that they are not only concentrating the production of their goods. They are not concentrating to implement some, some of the new methodologies in their production. Their focus was to, is to know the psychology of the consumers. One of my birthday, in one of my birthday, I have got one present from one of my friends. He has given me that it is called in Assam is Goda. So Tumangazana Goda Dukki. And I received that. And after properly observed the gift, then I have seen that right made in China. So Goda to hold Amar Ohomia Amar Hindu Dharma ba Amar Kalsaro at a part. Into hey study to hey product to Kuna produce question. That product is produced by the sign. They know the psychology of the Indian consumers very well. They invested huge amount of money in research and development. So this is one of the core concept that is integrated efforts to create demand that helps the service sector to generate more demand. Next one is leverage scarcity to create demand. So leverage scarcity is nothing but uh, you have seen this picture. Generally, Amar, a zito picture of the kids so sell, so out like that. So seats are limited. In case of air service, when you are going to book some tickets, then you will observe that the ticket will remain for an hour or for, for a half an hour like that. Then the consumers quickly purchase that commodities or book the particular service and like that they uh, leverage scarcity create demand and as a result of which the service sector performs well next uh in these slides you have seen some of the famous personalities of the world you know amitabh person you know cristiano ronaldo very well so the first picture shows that she's a tribal woman my point is that strategies of promotion make the difference. So the first omen is a tribal omen, and I have got the information of this picture. She is from she is from uh, Uttarakhand, and the service sector trying to hijack the brains of the of that particular community, of that the community living in that particular region, etc., and help to create demand. They are always seeing, always focusing 
to create demand through different strategies. So Amitabh persons have huge numbers of fan followers. If you take into consideration Cristiano Ronaldo, he has huge numbers of fan followers. In Twitter, he has more than 100 millions of fan followers. In Instagram, he has nine, 398 millions of fan followers. Around he has more than 60, 100 millions of fan followers in the world. So the companies like AFC is not thinking about the investment. They are thinking to generate demand of their product through this person. If the person accepts their product, then the demand of the product will be increased at a very faster rate. But if he ignores something, then the demand will decrease very sharply. Look into this picture. What you have observed in a recent, in a, in a very recent uh, press conference, Cristiano Ronaldo ignores Coca-Cola and as a result of which the market falls to this. From peak to this. It declines very sharply. So these persons have great influence to create demand of a product. So service sector has done such type of, or has invested in such type of activities to increase more demand of their product. But we have not seen such investment in agriculture. We have not seen any kind of investment, any kind of strategic product promotion in case of agriculture. And that is why the agriculture sector fails to create demand, fails to diversify its product. When we are talking about employment in agriculture, I'm trying to make an international comparison here. In case of India, around 42.74% of Indian population, Indian workforce are engaged in this sector and it has been declining, but the declining rate is not fast. According to Colin Clark in his book, he has written in his book, Condition of Economic Progress, is of the view that there is a close relationship between economic development and occupational structure. If more people engage in service sector, then it indicates that the economy is performing well or the economy is developed. If more persons engage in the agriculture sector, it indicates that the country is underdeveloped or the country is developing. But in case of India, majority of Indian workforce are engaged in this sector. And that is why we cannot say that Indian economy is a developed economy. From the side of GDP, it reached the position of third position, but from the side of development, the position of India is very bad. So we need to shift the laborers from agriculture to service or agriculture to industry. And that is why we need to, need to have some good policy measures, policy implications, good investment in all the sectors equally. And 42.74% of Indian workforce are not productive in two cents. Most of them are disguised unemployed. Their marginal productivity is equal to zero. So that is why we need to make them more productive. We need to shift the unproductive laborers in agriculture to other sectors. It is very essential. Next, agriculture valued per workers up to 2017. I have collected this data from food and agricultural organization and trying to present the facts that the average productivity of Indian agricultural workers. 
you see one agricultural workers of India generates per capita income that means generates one lakh twenty five thousand four hundred. This is not a very handsome amount. If you look into the average productivity of New Zealand, that is seventy four lakhs per year per farmer, sixty nine lakhs. For Australia, USA 62 lakhs, Brazil 9 lakhs, South Africa 8 lakhs, China 4 lakhs. So the farmers that are working in the agricultural field of the developed countries, they are more productive than the farmers or workforce engaged in India. Inside of us, I mean, India position to cook there. I mean, habitability and over the productivity of Halasa. Agriculture kept out India position fourth. But from the side of productivity, it is very worse. It is not good. So we need to improve the per capita productivity of Indian workers that are engaged in the agricultural sector. Next. Cropping pattern. This is very important. Cropping pattern is nothing but the proportion of area under different crops in a particular year. So, if you look into the cropping pattern of Indian agriculture, then you will find that the whole agricultural pattern is dominated by the food grains production. Look. In 1950-51, the area under food grain production was 76.7% and it has decreased to 64.56%. Still, the food grains dominate the, dominates the agricultural sector of India. In 2020-21, the area is around 60 and more than 60 percent the declining rate is very slow when we are talking about food grains food grains include rice wheat four cereals millet maize like four cereals included millets maize this type of crops and pulses so in to assess food security this crop is very essential for production to produce in case of but these crops are not remunerative these crops are not remunerative one quintal of rice is around 1500 or 1600 rupees like that when we are talking about one minute Sorry. So, the, excuse me, Rosie. Uh, Rosie, excuse me. Sorry for interruption. Okay, uh, there are one two questions. You may mazote interact kori banana last role rakhi ba question kine. Okay, most hard work success. Mo question dekhi chilo. Zori to me yet yeh interact kora kori bokra. I think one question only. Tomorrow, boys, to mute who is an again? After completion of the oh, yes. session, I will interact with the students. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. So, when we are talking about the cropping pattern, then the whole cropping pattern is dominated by the food grain sector. But the food grain sector is not remunerative in two sense. For food security, it is essential, but for generating more incomes to strengthening the economic condition of farmers, we need to diversify our cropping patterns. If you look into the area of fruits and vegetables, which are considered as very remunerative in nature, then you will find that 
The area under fruits and vegetables in during 1950-51 was 1.7%, which has increased to 6.24% right, not right now in 2010-11, right now it is around 8%. So the point is that the area under fruits and vegetables are very limited. So it fails to, that is why the Indian agriculture, to some extent, Indian agriculture fails to generate income uh, as compared to service and industry sector. So to generate more income, to have a very stable growth rate, we need to sense our coping pattern and for that, Structural renovation is very necessary. Recently, we are concentrating more in the production and the production of wheat and rice and the other kind of cereals. But till now, we are focusing very less on fruits and vegetables. That means the non-food items, which are considered very remunerative. And so, Within the production of food grains, the productivity of rice and wheat is very handsome, but in case of pulses, the productivity is fluctuating or it uh, has not been increased at a fast rate over the years because, but it is very necessary to increase the productivity of pulses because pulses give us protein, as more protein as compared to rice and wheat. So we need to increase the productivity of pulses at the same time. We need to increase the productivity of four cereals. From four cereals, we can develop different type of products as compared to rice and wheat. From courses, we can, four cereals, we can product more, we can develop more products. We can, the, the vertical diversification is more in case of four cereals in case of pulses. So next, share of agriculture in international trade. The share of agriculture and in international trade has been declining over the years, but slight improvement uh, have been observed in the recent times, but this is not good at all. If you compare with the uh, other countries, other developed countries of the world. So the, uh, from, from the side of export agriculture, has not done well. There are so many reasons behind the low performance of agriculture in international trade. And after completion of this presentation, I am sure that you will come to know about the uh, declining or about the low performance of Indian agriculture. So some selected issues of Indian agriculture. So the first part concentrates on the macroeconomic scenario of agriculture, but recently, from now, we'll discuss some of the issues of Indian agriculture, some of the selected issues of Indian agriculture. So first issues that I have selected, that is changing agrarian structure, shrinking land holding size. Over the years, the land holding size of Indian agriculture has been decreasing. Uh, the statement shows that according to agriculture census 2015-16, small and marginal farmers with less than two hectares of land account for 86.2%, that is 126 million, of the total 146.4 million operational land holding in India. Of this 126 million operational land holdings, 68.5% belong to only marginal farmers. So the Indian agriculture is dominated by the small and marginal farmers, and the percentage is around 86.2. As the population of the country uh, has been increasing, the land size has been decreasing. So due to this fact, and why this is happening, if there is more small and marginal farmers, then the agriculture will become inefficient in nature. Because if the farm size is very small, then there the, the implication of mechanized technique 
will be very difficult, will be very costly. So that is why the productivity of the small size of land holdings are comparatively low than the big farms. As there is a debate between big size of land and small size of land, that is a separate issue. But in general sense, small size of land cannot produce or the small size of lands are not productive. Next, you cannot go for crop diversification. Crop diversification is very essential. Indian agriculture is dominated by wheat and rice. The cropping pattern is not diversified. Why? Because most of the farmers are small and marginal. They do not want to take risk of undertaking some agriculture of high value added commodities which involves more risk. So crop diversification is less in case of small and marginal farmers and to go for crop diversification, you need to have some good amount of capital. Next, more non-crop diversification. Yes, this is very good point because the farmers are moving towards the non-crop diversification sectors. That means diversification within the livestock, diversification within the fisheries, diversification within the poultry. They are concentrating more on these enterprises recently. But the diversification nature is not organized in true sense. Rural urban migration uh, have been happening in case of India because land size is decreasing and farmers found that agriculture is not remunerative for them. So that is why they are shifting their occupation or they are migrate to the urban areas. So this, and that is why this is one of the core issues of Indian agriculture. So we need to think some other ways to develop the agriculture sector, to develop the small and marginal farms. In case of small and marginal farmers, their marginal productivity, oh sorry, marginal propensity to consumption is very high. Recently, government of India has introduced so many schemes. I have forgotten the name of the schemes, but they are transferring money to the farmers. When they are getting the monies, as their marginal propensity to consumption is quite high, they are not going to invest in the agricultural sector. They are investing the cash in different unproductive sectors, in consumptions, and so and so. So the policies that are undertaken by the government of, government of India for, for the farmers is not performing well. So cash transfer is not a solution for the farmers of Indian agriculture. We need to invest more on infrastructure development, like that more investment in irrigation facilities, more investment in agro process industries, and so and so. We need to invest, we need to think for long run growth of the Indian agriculture. Next, slow change in cropping pattern and low agricultural diversification. I have already discussed this point. But the point is that in the rural areas, the consumption pattern have been changing within their food baskets. Recently, the consumption of cereals in both rural and urban areas have been declining. At the same time, consumption of some high value added agricultural commodities uh, have been increasing. People are investing more on fruits and vegetables. Their consumption pattern have been totally changed. They are preparing some westernized diets. It is what I mean. Is all okay? So, our quality to dharan pattern westernized diet. I am asking to explain. So we are preparing more non-valuated agricultural commodities. But point is that we are producing more wheat and rice. We are not producing as part of consumption pattern 
of the people of India. So this is one of the core issue for the agricultural sector of India. Recently, the question of nutritional security comes. We need to have more calorie. We need to have more protein. We need to have different types of vitamins. But wheat and rice cannot fulfill all the nutritious requirements that our body needs. Our body needs to be able to nutrition about wheat and rice. We need to focus more on other agricultural commodities. So this is another one of the core issue of Indian agriculture. And the most interesting issue is that the investment of our public investment in agricultural sector has declined. Yes, the government of India has invested on agriculture sector, but the percentage is declining over the years. If there is less investment from the side of the governments in case of uh, in generating some infrastructures like irrigations, in generating infrastructures like wooden facilities, coal facilities, etc., etc., coal wooden facilities, agro process facilities then the private sector will not come forward to invest in agriculture. Foreign direct investment in agriculture is very less because they are capitalists. They are private investors. They are thinking only for profit. They are not thinking for the welfare of the society. After globalization, inequalities have been increasing among the countries of the world. This is not my statement. The research pointed out that inequalities have been increasing. To reduce the inequalities, we need to think for welfare of the people. But yes, more investment will definitely help the generate more employment opportunities, more income, more investment. There will be more positive externalities. But in case of uh, government investment, it is reducing, and that is why the private sector sectors have not come forward to invest in this sector, and that is why this sector have not uh, has not performed too well over the years. And this is not a very good indication from the side of the development of this sector. And it is considered that investment in research and extension is very crucial. More government investment in agriculture have been allocated to input subsidies rather than to productivity enhancing investment. See, in India, some political bias have been observed. There is some political biasness. Some of the parties trying to attract the farmers by introducing some sort short term policies. If you are giving more subsidies, they tell the farmers can you cook no? If you are transferring more funds to the farmers, if you are giving more subsidies, some unproductive subsidies, then that type of subsidies, that type of investment will not work properly in two sense. So in case of India, strong political forces still support subsidies for irrigation, electricity, and fertilizer. Yes, we need subsidies in irrigation, subsidies in electricity, subsidy fertilizers. But it has some environmental impacts too. Because the farmers, are, most of the farmers are not well educated. They, are, they don't know how to use the irrigation facilities. That is why. In case of Punjab, in case of Haryana, more irrigation subsidies generate some environmental issues there. So investment in research is very essential. So some of the researchers found that in a study conduct, conducted by Gulati and Tiwari on the impact of investment and subsidies on agricultural GDP growth, poverty reduction, it was estimated that for every rupee invested in agricultural research and education, 
agriculture gdp increases by rupees 11.2 so 1 rupee can generate it 11 rupees i think you have heard about the rice varieties ranjit tumalke ranjit dhanor kotha hunisa tumalke masuri dhanor kotha hunisa you have heard about boiler chicken you have heard about different things so these are the results of research assam agricultural university ranjit rice to develop korisil aru tar karone and that is why due to the development of ranjit varieties the people the farmers of assam the farmers of assam become self sufficient in the production of rice eta tumalke saba maximum dhanor bitorot okol ranjit dhane kara hoy because it has huge productivity masuri rice has huge productivity and these are the results of research and development green revolution Green revolution was the result of research and development. If there was no investment on research by Rockefeller Institute, by Mexico, then there will not be any kind of revolutions in the third world countries. So Norman Borlaugar, agriculture scientist, MS Swami Nathanodar, agriculture scientist, so the innovations no more will happen. আমি ফুড সেলফ সাফিসিয়েন্সি টু না পালো হেতেন সো ইনভেস্টমেন্ট ইন এগ্রিকালচার ইজ ভেরি এসেনশিয়াল ইফ উই কম্পেয়ার উইথ সাম ইন্টারন্যাশনালি ফরওয়ার্ড স্টেটস ফরওয়ার্ড কান্ট্রিজ দেন রিসার্চ এন্ড ডেভেলপমেন্ট এক্সপেন্ডিচার যদি ইন্টারন্যাশনালি আমি কম্পেয়ারিজন করু দেন হোয়াট উইল ফাইন্ড সো ফার্স্ট India invested only 0.64% of GDP in agricultural research. The amount is 1,46,070 rupees. And it has been declining over the years. The rate lines indicate the facts. In case of in USA, they have they invested 2.84%. of their total percentage of gdp in agricultural research and the amount is 45 lakhs 48570 crores in case of china it is 30 lakhs 22155 crores so they are investing more on agricultural research and extension in case of new zealand they have invested a huge amount of money in the development of the dairy farming in research and development that is why these countries are developing from the side of agriculture but in case of india we have invested very less amount in agricultural research and education so opportunities this is very important opportunities to participate in regional and global value chain are limited before that before entering into this topic i need 20 seconds of break may i shrobi ma yes yes sir theek hai sir 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 okay sure sure Yes, student. How is it? Can yes, I, good. Good. Okay. Can you can raise your hand. Muzi paisa kotha bilan? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Is it interesting? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, Rosie. Yes, 
Okay, continue. Okay, continue. So, okay. I have uh, so many questions, but uh, within the session, uh, I would like to give the answer of the first question during this break. So the first question uh, was asked by Harpit Bedi. Good morning. Sir, why uh, is it so that advertising strategies is not used very often in agriculture sector, even though we know that the growth of agriculture is important? First, see that awareness program about agriculture is very limited. Most of the farmers are uneducated and they are small and marginal farmers. I have already told that the agriculture sector is not organized in two sides. And that is why, and capital formation is also very less in case of agriculture. It is very important. Agriculture is one of the important sector of India. But I have told about that the government schemes are not doing well because the marginal propensity to consumption is very high. And as agriculture sector has limited incomes for product promotion, for advertisement, we need to have huge amount of money for the farmers. If they are not organized, it is very difficult to go for advertising. Yes, the people of India, the responsible person of India can take some initiatives within themselves within themselves, they can take some initiatives. Suppose uh, I'm presenting this, uh, um, um, this presentation. And within that, this presentation, I have used some of the pictures of different agricultural products. Indirectly, it helps to generate some awareness among you. If the academicians, if the industrialists use such type of strategies in the packaging of their product, then definitely we can move forward and agriculture will definitely develop. And for that, the quality of the product is also very necessary. Value addition of the product is very necessary. We have less value addition in our agriculture. So product quality certificate is necessary but our products are not qualitatively good. We have less packaging, we have less uh, grading systems, et cetera, et cetera. And the government investment in agriculture has been declining. These are the, this is the responsibility of the government uh, to introduce some system of uh, product promotion of agriculture and government Generally, in case of India, government has uh, introduced some short-term policies. And within that, it becomes very difficult to do some works in the process of advertising or promotion. Oh, we need to develop some new models. These are my statements. I'm not doing research in this area, but I can definitely say that advertisement is very necessary as compared uh, to uh, compete with the service sector and industry sector. And the linkage among this sector is also very necessary. So I think in the coming days, uh, government will give interest on quality improvement, grading, processing, post-harvest management. And after that, we can go for advertisement and promotion type of activities. In agriculture. I hope the Harpit has got the answer. Are you satisfied? Harpit, are you listening? Harpit, are you there? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay. welcome. Thank you for asking me a very uh, good question. Why agriculture is so important for India? So uh, this is a very 
good question and you will get the answer during my presentation. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay. Welcome. Yes, so one of the Harpit for uh, ask the term MSP plays a crucial role in agriculture, but the farmers still fails to earn sustain livelihood. Why is it so? See Harpit, uh, they are different, I think. So the first one is not, the second one is uh, Harpit. Even Harpit for. So MSP is essential to give incentive to the farmers to produce more, to diversify agricultural activities. But in case of India, you look into the MSP, then you will find that only Indian government uh, has announced MSP for only 23 commodities. And mainly government has given more emphasis on wheat and rice because government of India has run public distribution system. So that is why the cropping pattern is mainly dominated by wheat and rice, so wheat and rice. And so far as MSP is concerned, MSP is very less as compared to the cost. Right now, per quintal of A grade rice is 1,888 rupees MSP. In case of wheat, it is 1,970 or like that. If you calculate the cost properly, it is done by Commission of Agricultural Cost and Prices. But in true sense, if you calculate the cost, then the cost will be like 1500, 1600 rupees, and you are getting only 300 rupees. And I believe that MSP does not work properly in case of India. The structure is not good. It needs to include more commodities to increase the income of the farmers, to provide assurance of the farmers. But the MSP is less and it is limited within wheat and rice. And that is why farmers fail to generate income. Are you getting my point? So next question, Peter, I'm going to answer you. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> yes, I'm talking about Hello Edition. Opportunities to participate in regional and global Hello Chain are limited. So, what is global Hello Chain? See, the conceptual framework of agricultural Hello Chains includes a sequence of Hello adding activities from producing to consumption through processing and marketing. So processing and marketing is very essential for value addition of agricultural products. In case of India, we are selling our agricultural products without going for value addition. Without going for value addition. The pictures itself indicates that. This is the process of value addition. Suppose, 500 grams or 700 grams is required to develop French fries, this amount that is marketed by KFC, and this amount of pingles, one of the potato products. If we sell our product as potatoes, suppose 700 grams, the rupees, 15 rupees kazari per kilo, the rupees will be 10 for 700 grams. So India is getting only 10 rupees. But the same amount, by producing this amount, USA are getting 180 rupees. And this company, Pingles, it is also originated from USA, they are getting 100 rupees. So, so I'm value addition of Amitiman failure. If we are not going for value addition, we are losing 170 rupees, 100 rupees like that. A income to Amar Herai Goshe due to lack of value addition. So, when talking about KFC, KFC is a very standard brand. And you are also uh, heard about uh, Lace. Lace is originated from USA, and Lace started in the year 1932. 
productivity of indian agriculture will be less if we do not go for value addition so value addition is very crucial i am also sharing some other facts related to value addition so this is yes it sounds good india is the top most or the first ranked in the production of milk it sounds good we feel proud in the produce around 22.34% of world milk is it enu ka laise ami hindustani bharatiya hisabe gorob feel korchu no ami milk ot ek number ta su world tar bisot saba production ot ek number hoy lab nai low milk productivity in case of india milk animal or jitu ami productivity 1961 of us now India does not well uh, uh, work good. Does not improve. Uh, has not improved the productivity of milk. So, as only Guru India absorb human capacity, one cow average productivity per year is one thousand three hundred eighteen liters. It sounds good. Good than like no. abosor demand dia but in case of usa in case of new zealand in case of uh, china in case of united kingdom just look the figure in usa the average productivity per year is 10189 kg liters as only guru iman dia 2000 liter new zealand of 3000 united kingdom of 8000 because they are investing more on research and investment they are selecting the breeds they are farming some good breeds of cows ama gaon bilakot ki ase half a liter diye 250 grams diye 1 liter 2 liters tinu ka diye ama desi ga je bilak the breeds are not good in case of india we have 56 milk cows 56 lakhs milk cows it is 14 lakhs in usa it is 2 lakhs or 3 lakhs in case of new zealand but they dominate the world market they dominate the world market but from the side of in export india has no position among the top 10 countries production or side of our have to grab the international market in the face just look from the in case of international market the consumers demand some value added commodities value added milk because milk is perishable in nature they demand butter they demand cheese they demand skim milk powder they demand whole milk powder these products have huge demand in international market yes in the successful in exporting butters exporting butters in this position is poor but 
so far as exporting cc is concerned there is no position position of new zealand united states is good on the side of production they have a very low position but on the side of export they have reached second and third positions from the side of seeds or uh, sorry seeds next from the size of skim milk there is no position for india from the size of whole meat powder there is no position for india new zealand and united states dominates the table dominates the table dominate the whole table because they are good in processing their productivity is good they have invested more on milk production more on agro process industries and that is why they are doing good from the side of potatoes i have selected some of the commodity in which the rank of india from the side of production is good from the side of production of potatoes india ranks third the first rank goes to china second is uh, uh, second second position goes to india and the third position goes to us so uh, india is doing good on the side of potato production but from the side of export india again again fails to export to the world market dominate the world market in 2018 belgian potato processing sector achieved record growth of exceeding 5 million tons of processed potatoes not only did the processing sector break the record it was also the sharpest and annual increase on record since 1990 so i will like the belgium or other countries of france netherlands they have given more emphasis on value addition they have not enlarging their areas india is producing more by enlarging their areas they are using extensive mode of uh, cultivation not intensive mode of cultivation at all but these countries using some good intensive mode of uh, cultivation as well as they are focusing more on processing because processing generates more income more income than the production so we need to focus both production and processing and as well as productivity india jodi productivity bhal hol then world or ekhon country o patta na pala the data says i am not so from the side of tomato cultivation india ranks second same thing is happening there is no position in international trade from the side of export what is the tomato sector to india position ek india has a rank in the production of tomato but no rank on the side of export same thing is happening in case of orange production same thing is happening in case of banana production india ranks first but you just look top 15 countries of banana export and there is no position for india india ranks first so it is a kind of paradox you know so we need to develop the productivity we need to develop the quality we need to invest more on agro process industry so otherwise we cannot go for we cannot go to dominate the international market because international market generate more income than domestic one so bean production driving production in the ranks parts but no position a very low position in case of international export so from the side of uh, meat production the productivity is very not good in the ranks 2 3 5 like that from the side of production of meats but from the side of productivity point from the side of exports of meat india does not have a position if you look into the poultry productivity per 
whole tree, you will get 1.28 kg per year. But in case of Australia, in case of the USA, in case of Argentina, in case of Italy, it's quite high. In case of peak and kettle, same pictures have been observed. So India productivity is good from meter kettle. So we need to improve our productivity. We need to develop our process industries. And I like to add another point. The formalities for export some process meat or fruits, vegetables, etc. Formalities is very lengthy. If you visited FPDA, agriculture processing something, I will share the sites, then you will find that the formalities is very difficult for the small and marginal farmers to go for export of some some kind of meat outside. So next, some other issues, ground issues. Revolution, I don't believe. From uh, my personal view, I don't believe on revolutions because we have green revolution, we have wheat revolution, we have blue revolution, we have gold revolution in Indian agriculture. But the impact of this revolution is very limited. But the impact of these revolutions are very limited. We have production from the side of production. We are termed this revolution. But the sides of impact. The impact of green revolution is limited within Punjab, Haryana, and UP. It is not accelerated at all. We are producing meat, we are producing milk, but we are not able to get a position in the international market. Why? So this is not revolution. For revolution, we need to production, productivity, export, everything should be included within the system. Employment. So there is green revolution, but the good benefit of green revolution limited within that sector. So revolution should have some positive impact on the community, on the country as a whole. Inclusiveness should be there. We need to include more productive people. We need to generate more productive people. But the revolutions in India, from a personal view, this is my statement, that have not worked in its direction. So next, agriculture becomes a risky enterprise. I have already discussed this in the first slide. Unorganized agriculture. Yes, we have not a organized agriculture. We have not a organized agricultural system in the rural villages, in the rural areas of Assam, in the rural areas of other states. We are farming ducks, we are farming hens, we are farming goats, we are farming pig, we are farming cow, but not formally. We have not a organized structure. Individually, by householder, at a doctor, local consultation, however, Amar Kishuman of Hurwa doctor, I like that we have a very close connection with the doctors, but we have not a close connection with the veterinary doctors if we are farming livestock. We have not, we are not trained at all. I'm not training. Most of the farmers in India used to go for non-institutional credit right now. They have no proper trainings, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. That is why the whole process is not organized. If the prices of banana in Sipsagar is 50 rupees. It will be 100 rupees uh, in Tinsipia. It will be 
10 rupees in Gulaghat. It will be 5 rupees in Dhuburi. There is not a standard price of agricultural products. That is why I'm saying that agriculture is not organic. But service sector product like in Uganda. So the Ami research score 599 of back to zero. Same price for all of the industrial products of service or product of the prices will be remain same. So that is why these sectors are organized. Farmers are farmers not entropy. So value addition process is not there. Farmers are just doing cultivation, nothing else. They are not adding any kind of value of their product. If they will not become entrepreneur, then we cannot expect for development of agriculture. Farmers should be entrepreneur at the same time. Lack of cooperative model in agriculture. Cooperative model that was developed by Mahatma Gandhi, and he stated that cooperative farming uh, will provide economies of scale, or according to him, it is a very good model for the development of agriculture. He opined that. But in case of India, there is no cooperative farming. Yes, there is cooperative farming, not in true sense. But cooperative farming is very necessary for risk management mainly. For risk management purpose, you need, need to have cooperative farming. If you have an enterprise, then the risks will be shared among the different members. So this is also another point. Domination of non-institutional source of credit. These are some of the uh, other issues of agriculture in India. Next, challenges. So, challenges. The first challenge I have quoted the farmers' research. Till now, uh, the National Crime Records Bureau of India reported that the total 296,438 Indian farmers have committed suicide since 1995 to till now. Till 2015, I think the data uh, is up to 2015. Just look into the amount. Two lakh ninety-six thousand four thirty-eight farmers are doing suicide, or committed suicide. So this is very huge sales for Indian agriculture. If you look into the figures, look into the curves, uh, composition of suicide among self-employed occupational, mainly the agricultural farmers are considered under self-employed occupational. It has been uh, decreasing over the years, but it still it is quite high. As one farmer also the suicide police are due to some farm-related issues, that is also important. At a Zibon Gusizo, lacks to Bade is a zone of the suicide curse that is also selling for us. So, two lakh ninety six thousand farmers still now committed suicide. This is a very huge silence. This is the failure of government policy. So, ground level government supply head is there, but monitoring activities is not good. And Recently, farmers are using some new techniques and technology without having proper knowledge. There are so many causes. I'm not going to point out the causes because I believe that it is a mental disease. And to find out the factors, it is not very easy. So as the data says, uh, so it is challenging. But to mention some of the reasons, we need to have some in-depth research. Without having research, I'm not going to point out the reasons of farmers, farmer suicide. Some of the common reasons are indebtedness, etc. New methods in agriculture. These are some of the common issues, but there may be so many factors that may influence the farmers to go for this kind of things, which is not acceptable. So state-wise. Uh, data. Yes, I have so many uh, slides to share. The, um, so I'm uh, skipping these slides. So challenges for sustainable agriculture. Recently, the Sustainable Development Goals of the world has emphasis on sustainable agriculture. So far as sustainable agriculture is concerned, India is not doing well. Uh, emissions of greenhouse gases is very high. 
in case of India from agriculture, about 18 percent. The agriculture sector contributes about 18 percent to total greenhouse gas emissions. So the fertilizer use in India is not balanced. It is imbalanced because farmers are getting subsidies. Farmers do not have proper knowledge about the use of fertilizers because they are not well trained. And that is why they are using the fertilizers not in a very balanced NPK, that means nitrogen, phosphorus are not nitrogen, phosphorus and potash. They are not using in a balanced way and that is why it has some bad impact on land fertility. Land has composed, land is composed of zinc, iron, magnesium, sulfur. These are the components, micronutrients of land, but due to imbalance use of fertilizers, these components, micro components, micronutrients has reduced from the agriculture. And this is also one of the poor issues. Land degradation are also another poor issues for Indian agriculture. So when we are talking about uh, sustainable agriculture, India is the third emitters of greenhouse gases in the world. So we are using more fertilizers. We are using the fertilizers not in a balanced mode. And that is why this is one of the core salience for Indian agriculture. And use of chemical fertilizers, that means N, it, uh, it is nothing but the urea. Well, urea, nitrogen rich fertilizer, the use of nitrogen rich fertilizer in India has been increasing. And that is why. And that is why the emission of greenhouse gases is more in case of India. And uh, to develop nitrogen added fertilizers, they use ammonia type of uh, some chemicals, which is very harmful for global warming. So if you go into the depth of the uh, use of fertilizers, then you will find that it is very harmful uh, for our environment. So groundwater has been decreasing over the years. In case of Punjab, in case of Rajasthan, in case of Haryana, they have used the groundwater to a very optimum level. In Assam, <coughs> we are in a safest position, but in case of other states of the country, they have faced so many problems. Uh, uh, not other states of country, they have face so many problems. So we need to use the groundwater in a proper way. Otherwise, there will be not any kind of sustainable agriculture. So next, agriculture and food security. So World Food Program USA alerts that I mean is coming. So around 40 million of world, uh, sorry, one minute. Preventing famine is soils to the 40, 1 million people in over 40 countries are facing emergency level of hunger. So hunger is one of the salience for the agriculture sector of all the countries, of all the countries. So countries like Democratic Republic of Congo, they're facing the problem of food insecurity very highly. The Democratic Republic of Congo suppressed Yemen this year as the world worst hunger crisis have been happening in Congo. So about 27 million people are severely hungry in Congo. These are some of the pictures of the children of Congo. So next, Yemen. So they are also facing the problem of severe hunger. Uh, so these countries are facing the problem of severe hunger. So hunger is one of the main salience for the agriculture sector. And in case of India, yes, India is able to eradicate poverty, but still we have more than 30% of Indian population are under the poverty line. So this is also one of the salience for Indian agriculture. So if you look into the second objectives of uh, sustainable development goals, then you will find that the position of India is not good. 
the agriculture sector of India, I think it's not performing well because the cropping pattern of India is dominated mainly by wheat and rice. And um, we are not diversified our agricultural activities and there are so many causes behind the stagnant pattern of agriculture, hidden issues are there. But we have, we are the uh, top most, top first, uh, we, we rank first uh, among the undernourished countries of the world. <clears throat> Our position right now, so far as uh, World hung, Hunger Index is concerned, it is about uh, 94, we are using 94 among 119 countries of the world. We are also facing the problem of hungry. So when there is uh, food insecurity, then the children of the country may face uh, wasting problem, stunting problem, and both wasting and stunting uh, will be there. When we are talking about uh, wasting that is thinner than normal, when about, uh, we are talking about uh, stunting shorter than normal, wasting problem support comparatively shorter than normal. And this is called a standard. So in case of India, we have majority of the states are facing the problem of wasting high, medium, and low. Uh, in case of high, Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Maharashtra, Karnataka, these states uh, have faced the problem of uh, wasting. And the states like Gujarat, Rajasthan, Haryana, these are rich countries. Why did this uh, race state? Why these states are facing the problem of wasting because improper allocation of resources. So next, to eradicate this, we need to have some this kind of agricultural commodities. But India's position of these commodities, production of carrot or the distribution or allocation of uh, these uh, vegetables and fruits are not good in case of India. That is why uh, we are facing the problem of food insecurity, nutritional insecurity. So these are the challenges. And another challenge is youth are not interested towards green livelihood. Recently, new enterprises have been developed in agriculture sector. So we should not ignore the agriculture sector. Someone asks why agriculture sector is important. Agriculture sector is important because it provides food security. Due to COVID pandemic, most of the workers mi migrated reversely to their own states and recently their options of livelihood is only agriculture. So for agriculture to earn foreign income, to provide income to national, in uh, national income, Agriculture is very important. Agriculture is past, agriculture is present, and agriculture is future. Where, where you can take decisions yourself. Self decision, decisions can be undertaken. But as a teacher, as a professional, professionalist in different areas, they cannot take decisions independently to do something. But the farmers are the ones they can take decisions. So the youth generation can go for agriculture. So the agriculture concept to clear with agriculture will emerge Harana Kebola, I mean Hanthetic, the KSP, the Kitikas, and Ukan, the Tarapurta, the discussion of prison as easy to more issues, economic, no kong, agriculture, or for good homo yugo set. The youth have are, youth have been no area, is okay, and guess for you are. So way forward. Uh, I'm coming to the mm, last portion. I have only very few slides to share. So a strong and inclusive macroeconomic measures to stabilize the agriculture sector is necessary. Institutionalization of agriculture sector for greater benefit of the farmers, land, irrigation, marketing, extension service, agricultural credit. Within this area, we need to work very properly. So the farmers will get optimum benefit from these segments of these sectors. 
Otherwise, we cannot improve this sector. We cannot make this sector productive. Productive public investment and more emphasis on research and education. I have already told research and education investment is very crucial. Government investment is crucial in agriculture. Promotion, greater value addition to agriculture produced through improved post-harvest technologies. After harvesting, we need to develop some post-harvest technologies. That means agro-process industries, polar facilities, etc. Et Agricultural diversification is very necessary to uh, sustain nutritional security in the country. Agricultural diversification to increase farm income, value addition, nutritional, nutritional security, everything will be happen if there is agricultural diversification. Sustainable agriculture, we should give more emphasis on sustainable. Vertical diversification to attract youth in agriculture. So if there is more vertical diversification, then youth will definitely be attracted towards this sector. Potential, it is, yes. India can dominate the world market, milk market. If there is proper processing and investment in the milk market, milk production, Next, India can dominate the fruits and vegetable market because India ranks good in case of the production of some of the fruits and vegetables. So India could develop some uh, agro-process industries, research and development, more educational institutions should be there. Long-run investment in agriculture can generate multiple opportunities for farmers. India can improve its banana sector and meat market can be enlarged. So if uh, these are the potentialities of Indian agriculture, as time is very short, I'm not describing these points truly, but I believe that during my presentation, you have got some of the ideas about the potentialities of Indian agriculture. So how can we bring hope and success in agriculture? I mean, can I do a for agriculture? Can I get agriculture? First, I mean, we need to give respect to the farmers. We need to give respect to the farmers. As a professor, as a system professor, as a teacher, we are getting respect. We are getting the dignity of our works. But farmers, I mean, bazaar hotelo, hotelo. I mean, farmers. Shikhok zonak zidor a bivohar koru ba belak profession of thakar zonak zidor a bivohar koru. Farmers zonak koru ne na kono. Ita question marks asa. Asa it fact. So farmers are the living gods in this art. I believe. Without whom we cannot survive. This is fact. You cannot choose the fruits and vegetables in the market if the farmers do not produce. You cannot get bread if the farmers do not produce. You cannot get tea, coffee if the farmers do not produce. So farmers are the living gods in the art. So make agriculture as a profession without proper training, with proper training and education. It is demand for all agriculture, agriculturists, agriculture entrepreneurs, they are well trained. Uh, they have got proper education. I, do, I am not saying about that he should go for MBA, he should go for some high degree in agriculture, but he need to have minimum education to get the training. So research innovations, creativity can the same, can make the same. So research innovations and creativity should be there. Agriculture should be part of education. Every educational institution should have an agricultural garden. So agricultural garden accounts. So students are definitely aware of from primary to the upper level. We need to have an educational garden. We need to have some courses relating to agriculture. So that is from that angle, we can generate awareness. Take agriculture as a particular participatory occupation that will make a strong linkage and inclusiveness. So it is very important that to mean agriculture, you need to incorporate more people within your systems. And so inclusiveness should be there. So awareness about the government schemes, we are not going to know about the demands. The farmers are not asking for their benefits. They are criticizing. Practically, they are not visiting the agricultural offices, departments to know about some schemes. Yes, government has provided so many schemes, but 
the farmer's demand side is weak than supply side. Property model in agriculture is very essential. Grab the opportunities, organic product, agro service, biofertilizer, sensing consumption pattern, etc. Think vertically, do not think horizontally. That means don't think, don't go for extension, go, go for intensive mode of agriculture and it will help you. So processing, packaging, marketing, promotion, this should be in agriculture. Nutritional security and agriculture diversification is very crucial for agricultural system. So these are some of my uh, realizations. So I mean, when you see Forbes magazine, we have heard about Forbes magazine. Forbes magazine is one of the leading magazine of uh, the USA. Yes, the Forbes name too, like, good. No, I don't know. Who knows who is standing by? Who is it? The magazine Do you believe that the farmers will get a position in the Fox magazine? Yes. These farmers, these farmers, he's a farmer. I mean, the Gahoy he's from China. Ah. So 2012 for six numbers of a of China is maybe. These are the farmers. He's from <coughs> India. So, if there is innovation, if there is creativity, if there is consistency, everything possible. So, I just like to share some of my pictures that association with agriculture. I always love for agriculture. I love agriculture. Uh, <coughs> if the demand is a professional level of Nahilatan. I'll be fine, definitely. So when I joined uh, at Gorgon College, that I have developed one garden, agricultural garden, to make awareness among the students about the importance of agriculture. And this person is the principal, was the principal of our college during my joining time, is the Punyadhar Gogoi, Dr. Punyadhar Gogoi. These are the fish product. Fish. So the students. I have visited so many uh, Muga gardens in Sipsagar. This is a project I have given when I was at Dibuga, in Dibuga University. So I had given this uh, assignment to the students to cultivate. Uh, King Seal, and they have submitted. I have taken the videos and photos of the cultivation process. I have also provided training to the students of agro process. So, practical involvement is very necessary to make awareness about agriculture. When I was doing research in the Google University. I undertake some agricultural activities in my hostel, at my hostel. And this is some of, some of the pictures of our production. And during that time, I have taken 13 bigas of land in lease for cultivation. And I and some of my friends had undertaken agricultural activities in the local areas of Dibuga. And the last sentence of this presentation, agriculture is past, present, and future. This is my sentence. Belek kibayada korar puti habia hoka hokole hamazo puti stha hoyse. Aru e belek kibayada korar kubidha kichhi khandot bohu dasse. So thank you for your patience. I have completed my presentation, and it is too lengthy. Tumaloke amoniu pabo para. So to share all the issues and challenges, we need more time. Within one class, I have covered some of the issues and challenges. And it, it is very difficult for me to incorporate all the issues and challenges. I'm just trying to share some of the challenges they are facing the, facing the Indian agriculture sector during 21st century. And 
during 20th century. So hope you have got some of the knowledge about Indian agriculture. And thank you again uh, for your patience. And right uh, now I'm going to uh, take some of the questions from your sites, if you have. Oh, uh, uh -huh. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for your presentation. It is very interesting. I sincerely believe the students have enjoyed it. Actually, you have explained uh, agricultural products in details. Agricultural products, different issues. In it is very lengthy. I think you feel tired also, but there are lots of questions for you. Okay, okay. I'm going okay. to. I am taking the uh, 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 questions from the SATs first. Okay, you can tell now. Yes. So, so is it one point? Oh, yes. Oh, no, no, more style will be basic comfort till good. First to Dilu, second to Dilu, third to MSP Koisu. Uh, during that agricultural growth response to the food security needs, how can this be obtained? Oh. So Anindita Paul has asked that, uh, uh, sir, ensuring that agricultural growth responds to food security needs. How can this be obtained? Agricultural growth responds to the food security needs. How can it be obtained? Yes. Uh, yes, we can obtain agricultural growth. Yes, uh, right now, we are a food self-sufficient country. We have around 306 million tons of food grains. So from that production, we can take the responsibility of food security. Again, food security does not limit it within the production of wheat and rice. The new concept of food security that is, that is nutritional security comes and we need to think about nutritional security. For nutritional security, we need to diversify our cropping pattern. We need to give more emphasis as we have more food grains production. So that is why we can shift our agricultural production from food grains to non-food grains. And the non-food grain commodities are more remunerative in nature. And if we invest more agro-process industries, if we give more emphasis on agricultural research and extensions, then there will be more productivity. And if this happens, then the growth will be more in Indian agriculture. So this is my answer of your question. Anindita, are you getting my answer? Yes, sir, and doctor. Thank you. Okay, welcome. So next. My question is to you, Isade asks, with, question, uh, with increase in population, the use of chemicals, harmful substances in agricultural production is increasing. So does it mean that Indian agriculture is choosing, uh, does it mean that Indian agriculture is choosing quality of our, uh, quantity of our quality? And if so, it is right to do, because ultimately it will affect the longevity and health of its citizen and reduce the country's growth overall, please answer that. Definitely, you have asked a very good question. Yes, problem is not the use of chemical fertilizers. Problem is not the use of pesticides. Problem is the imbalanced use of chemical fertilizers and imbalanced use of pesticides. So if we use the fertilizers in a balanced way, I think that the emission of uh, CO2 or greenhouse gas will be reduced. So it needs rationality first. And second thing is that we have more livestock. We have more livestock, but livestock generates GSC. More livestock, more greenhouse gas. So we need to give emphasis on the productivity of the livestock. We need to give uh, more emphasis on the quality products. Yes, we are giving more emphasis on quantity, but 
quantity comes from the extension agricultural activities, not from intensive mode of cultivator cultivation in case of India, because our productivity is less. Productivity is less. Remember, we have more chances to increase our production. But at the same time, we need to take care of the environment too. And for that, farmers need to be trained properly. We need to use some biofertilizers. That is why I'm saying that more investment on research and extension, more investment on biofertilizers, more investment on organic farming. So if we do so, this is my personal statement, but when we are making some statement, we need to have proper research. But from my point of view, from my limited knowledge, I'm saying that we need to give focus on these areas to get sustainability in Indian agriculture, to give a good and healthy and active life. We need to take care of these issues too. So, all of the farmers of Korea need more research. Farmers, I mean, Canada are trained to this. Canada are very hard to research. This is a very important thing. And there are so many factors uh, that influence the environment as well as our health. We should be also careful too. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Next. Uh, next, next, next. Good afternoon, sir. Even though there is presence of diversification of agriculture, then why does seasonal unemployment exist in our economy? It's a very good question. So yes, uh, diversification is there, but uh, the agriculture diversification does does not ensure you the productivity. We have large number of family size. The family is doing diversification but the rate of diversification in india i'm not saying that it is good in india it is very low agricultural diversification in india is low are you getting my point is low but diversification generates productive employment but all types of diversification may not generate productive employment. So within agricultural diversification, we have crop diversification, we have non-crop diversification. So diversification plus agro-based industries will definitely produce some productive employment opportunities in Indian agriculture, but diversification should be there to reduce uh, this guy's unemployment from Indian agriculture. But the agriculture sector in India uh, it's not diversifying the activities to a large extent. Hope you are getting my point. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sir, uh, what uh, is the relationship between WTO policy and farmers? Which I guess, uh, right now I'm not concentrating on WTO policies. They, WTO, uh, we have joined WTO in 1995, I think. So after the implement, implementation of some boxes, some policies, uh, Indian market is open to all the world, um, all the countries of the world. It is open after liberalization and after becoming the member of World Trade Organization. So see, the developed countries, the cost of production of the developed countries are very less because they are using some sophisticated technology in agriculture. But in case of India, the cost of production is quite high as compared to developed countries. And that is why they can sell out their product at a very low price as compared to the products, uh, Indian products. I mean, to give the boss to Kinibola, they came to to Bukutlo, they came to Kinibola, and they came to recently China products, industrial products, or particular products. The price is low, and the these are people are preferring to buy those. As a result of which, the farmers are the competitiveness to come And this may be this may be one of the causes of farmer suicide. Another cause is that new technique of production after becoming the member of the World Trade Organization. The Indian farmers are introducing some of the new techniques in the agricultural system, but they 
don't have proper knowledge, they don't have proper training, you have heard about BT cotton, BT brinzel like that, and failure of that crops is just because of the improper knowledge of the farmers. So, Jimane that globalized hoy goya se, Jimane farmers se compete kori bo pora. Na noto na technology loye loye hoye se, but they don't have proper knowledge because agricultural extension service in India is very poor, and that is why they are not uh, uh, recover the cost of their product and go for uh, this uh, go for committing suicides. And this this is uh, the impact of World Trade Organization as my Topi, uh, I am not incorporating World Trade Organization. These are the views of my side. If you want to know more, then kindly visit some of the research papers of WTO and Indian Agriculture. Then you will find some of the reasons behind your questions. But uh, I have answered what I know from my side. Thank you. So Thank you, sir. Should, oh, welcome. What should be the future prospect of new farm bill in India? New farm, new farm bill in India. See, the first thing is that I have gone through the bill, but I am not in a position right now to give you the comments about new farm bill from a personal point of view, because it is there is some con conflicts it is not easy to make some statements about the bill but if possible uh, i will share some of the research papers with the organizers about the farm bills but uh, in true sense i'm not going to share i'm not going to make some statements because it is a very debatable topic right now uh, so excuse me for this and uh, you can, uh, I will send some of the papers and from there, you can find some of the answers of your questions, but it has got some positive and negative impacts too. So that is why some issues are coming. So thank you for your questions and you have put it a very, very recent questions after the questions, but for that reason, I'm not in a position to <laughs> answer your question. Thank you. But the question is good. Okay, sir. Thank you. Rosit, I think no more questions. Students, any more questions from your side? One minute. Let me check it. Okay, I think no more questions. Uh, Rosit, it is very, really interesting. I, from the messages of the student, I have realized that they have benefited a lot. And you have explained the things in a very lucid way and uh, with lots of examples, we are, uh, explaining each and every, product, almost all products of agriculture uh, cover, you have covered comparing with the other countries of the different countries of the world. I definitely believe that uh, all the students will be benefited. And now uh, I would like to request our respected SOD Topositi Dr. Isar to say a few words here. Shurajit, um, uh, Dr. Shurajit Shaikya, although um, it was really mesmerizing uh, while going through your lecture session, I have gone through the whole uh, presentation. And uh, we are really grateful to you for such a marvelous presentation for our students. It is not the, for the sake of presentation that you have made. Uh, you have the soul in your presentation. The soul is the uh, effect because uh, it is, um, you are dealing with, in the, with this field, the agricultural sector and at the, in your session we have come to know, uh, we have seen uh, lots of your, the, your involvement in the different kinds of projects or you have constructed the garden it's so nicely in the campus your college campus and the, about which uh, i i used to know earlier but i have not uh, seen it but today at least glimpse i could have but uh, the thing is that you are doing an excellent job uh, with all the due respect to your uh, presentation uh, i think our students are highly benefited 
uh, what to so, uh, say actually you have covered everything nothing to say we are not expert in that field whatever um, because uh, you have the expertise in it but the thing a few things uh, that we can see that um, india as a, from the production level of point of view india has become a net exporter to some extent in the field of agriculture but the thing is that we have to see the other end that is the you talked about all the things because the people the countries uh, the who will export who will import our commodities you talked about it i am uh, telling it once again because the presentation in that way the packaging from starting from packaging the uh, nutritional value the value added um, aspects of the products if it is to be internationally acceptable if we are to export it then the international standard we have to maintain it and we know the uh, only uh, the major thing in the world is now um, uh, the food for all it should be it should become a global campaign so if food for all becomes a global uh, um, uh, we can say the concept then only um, a true reform in the agricultural sector will, will come now in case of india as you have already you have focused everything since 2017 after that there is no planning except the defense we know in india no planning in uh, all the sectors and the most i believe the most important sector the base during the lockdown phases in the last one and a half years we have observed what sort of um, uh, how people survived it is only based on agriculture not on any other sector basically so agriculture saved us so we can come to know agriculture is the lifeline and here in this situation when we need the more nutrition we look at the agricultural products only so how the nutrition value can be uh, maintained when there is an erosion of the quality of the land that you have explained so nicely the, the scientifically that you have given so agriculture uh, although the planning process the importance is not there as the uh, plan is not there i i think i i do agree with you the government initiatives special initiatives as our country is an agricultural country so special plan should be formulated again to save the uh, not exactly from the base to the top level it should be from a uh, sector as per the necessity wherever the inputs are actually needed there the plan should be formulated and this plan should not be made to my experience to my feelings it should not be made uh, by the policy maker it should be made the by the agricultural economist like you you the, the country wise country wide a committee a group of people should be selected it may be 1000 it may be 500 it may be 200 they should guide the agricultural sector in that way so and, and with regard to you have talked about everything agricultural protection surabhi i am taking just one or two minutes as because uh, the age is passing by um, so sometimes uh, the nature of talking more comes out so uh, after going through one and more than one and half hours of fantastic session of suraj i am also feeling to talk when one or two minutes should we will give so i'll i am thankful yes, to you sure. for giving me the time just one sector 21st century there has been a lot of change as you have seen from the uh, presentation of a uh, lot of challenges in the agriculture sector are there so those challenges as i am underlined by uh, dr shoikia here uh, and uh, regarding uh, many other challenges like agricultural protection that uh, that has been procrastinated uh, so many times uh, uh, in global um, trade and negotiations so these aspects uh, will remain and what is our intention our students are our base so you should Uh, um, develop the interest in the field of agriculture don't be attracted only towards the agriculture or uh, uh, industrial or world or something like that have interest in agriculture this is the mother agriculture is the mother of um, of this world uh, for survival so for to survive nicely having a nutritious uh, um, body and the nutritious mind agriculture is the ultimate source so 
you think about the issues that has been um, pointed out by uh, Shoykya sir. So think about it and you need to be proactive in these fields. That is the basic purpose. Our generations, one after another, will pass away. We will be uh, very older people. We will have to leave the space. Whatever you could not do, you do yourself. You be become involved in that, okay? So that is the basic purpose. Whenever we invite uh, such knowledgeable persons like um, Dr. Shoikya here. And the, with Dr. Shoikya, Surajit sir, we have a special affiliation because our college, our family economics department is an extended family of uh, Dr. Shoikya. So he has a, he's always uh, been, uh, if he gives uh, one hour time for his own class, he gives two hour times for you people. So think about the situation. So non-stop, it's not a matter of job to talk about more than one and a half hours um, for you. So guy, girls, uh, take the lesson, get the points, uh, go through it. You'll be highly benefited and you hope, Surajit, we are really thankful to you. And um, we expect such uh, sessions in future also. And thank so, you. thank you very much. Over to Shurubi. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Roy, sir, for your kind words. And uh, from the set box, uh, students' feedback, uh, we have realized that students are very much enlightened with this uh, presentation. And all the students, almost all the students have written that they are benefited all and they are going to, they have learned a lot of things. Thank you, Surajit, for your thank nice you presentation. It is a really a very good presentation and you have covered almost all the fields within two, uh, half, uh, one and a half hours and two hours. We have, you have covered all the things and our students will be definitely benefited and we teachers also benefited. And thank you for uh, sharing your views, giving time to us. And now I am going to the formal, I'm, I, I would like to invite uh, Supriti Syam for vote of thanks. Supriti. <coughs> Uh, as my uh, network bandwidth is a little bit poor, uh, let me switch off my uh, camera. I hope you will not mind. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, respected uh, principal of Women's College in Sukhya, Dr. Razi Bodloi, sir. Respected resource person of today's session, Dr. Surajit Sukhya, sir. Respected HOD of uh, Economics Department, uh, Women's College in Sukhya, Series of Topoziti, Dr. Rai, sir. My respected colleagues, uh, Dr. Surabi, uh, Dr. Ma'am, and uh, Bhagdalokhi Ma'am, and my dear students. Uh, first of all, I, on behalf of Department of Economics, Women's College in Sukhya, would like to extend my vote of thanks to uh, Principal Sir of Women's College in Sukhya, Dr. Raji Bodle Sir, for joining us and giving his valuable time despite of his uh, busy schedule. Thank you, sir. We would like to extend our heartfelt thanks and gratitude to the resource person of today's program, Dr. Surajit Sekhya sir, for enlightening our students with different dimensions and issues relating to Indian agriculture with a uh, delightful presentation. We expect uh, such kind of support from your end in future also. Thank you, sir. Uh, I would uh, also like to thank HOD of Economics uh, Department of Women's College in Sukhya, Mr. Topoduti Dr. Roy sir, my colleague, uh, colleagues, uh, Dr. Surobi, Dr. Roy, uh, Dr. Dr. Ma'am, uh, Bhagyalokhi Ma'am, for uh, their constant involvement in organizing this lecture program. Thank you all. Uh, last but not least, our thanks goes to our, our dear students for their patience high hearing. Thank you all. And with the uh, heartfelt thanks, or our heartfelt thanks goes to all the farmers who are working hard to feed us. Our, our respect goes to all the farmers who are feeding us. Let us, uh, let me wrap up, uh, wrap up my uh, formal vote of thanks. Thanking you all again. Have a delicious lunch. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Supriti. Uh, now I think uh, we should have a photo session. Uh, so I would like to request all the participants and all the teachers and uh, also the respected resource person to open the video. Sir, Roy, sir.
মই ওপেন কৰি আছো আ স্যার ফটো স্যার ভাই গো কো স্টুডেন্ট স্টুডেন্ট সিনিও লালে ফটো খন নহলে এই হয় আছে স্টুডেন্ট কি মানে আমাৰ কি লৈছো বাইদেউ স্টুডেন্টস আমাত কবি 